Speaker, New Zealand has a clear challenge ahead, and that is building exports and growth. That is the critical issue facing this nation beyond all else. The opposition has spent all their time talking about social issues. They did that actually in nine years of government. And what happened during that period? New Zealand exports since 2005 went backwards. That's what happens when you take your eye off the ball. And the previous government did that, and that's why we're in the situation we are today. That's why this government has a relentless focus on the economy. We are dealing with a global financial crisis. We are dealing with debt, $300 million per week. And I know the opposition just eerily dismisses it as if it's of no particular consequence, no particular constraint on their $5 billion of promises just in one month. No, they are truly in la-la land around that. And so that's why National is building the conditions for growth. That's why we're building on science and innovation. Now, I had Mr Goff talk today about Sir Paul Callaghan. He obviously doesn't read what Sir Paul actually writes, because this is what he wrote in the Dominion today. Today, I note, quote, our thinking is too often mired in fashionable cliché rather than serious analysis. Ten years ago, we went for biotech. Now politicians talk clean tech. What did we hear about Mr Goff talking about this today? I think it was about clean tech. That's right. So fashionable, uh, a fashionable cliché rather than serious analysis exactly is where Mr Goff is mired in. Mr Sir Paul went on to say this. Our future lies in the niches of the world economy. We will creep up on our competitors in the odd spots, in respiratory humidifiers, such as, for instance, Fisher and Parker Healthcare, in crystal-controlled oscillators for GPSs on a chip, such as with Raycom, and in med magnetic resonance sensors for the oil industry, such as Madratech. Building science and innovation, Mr Speaker, has been my central focus as a minister. And I've been systematic in this regard over the last two years. So in 2009, there was a focus on fundamental science, building up the CRA Capability Fund, building up the Marsden Fund, building up HRC and establishing the Prime Minister's Science Prizes, and also arranging the appointment of Sir Peter Gluckman as the Prime Minister's Chief Science Advisor. Early in 2010, we then moved to the reform of the CRIs, established a task force, gave them clear objectives and bulk funding for core science, a clear recommendation from the OECD. That has been rolled out. Also last year, in the budget, building business support for science and innovation. And this year, on February the 1st, establishing the Ministry of Science and Innovation. And you'll hear a great deal more about that over the next few months. I might, might note, however, when Labor published uh, the new appointments, uh, Mr Shearer, who apparently supports the Ministry of Science and Innovation, still described himself as a spokesman for sci research science and technology. All I can say is to David, catch up. And if that is indicative of Labour, really, isn't it? it is. Catch up all the time, and that is just one small microcosm. <laughs> Mr Speaker, the programme in each of those two years essentially rolls out over four years. And I just want to focus on some of the key initiatives. The, tech in, the technology development grants will grow from $22 million this year to $62 million three years from now. The commercialisation transfer budget will grow from $4 million this year to $8 million three years from now. And the Rutherford Discovery Fellowships, primarily for advanced postdoctorates, will grow from $1 million this year 
to $9 million three years from now. That will fund, in that year alone, 50 new uh, discovery fellowships. That's 50 scientists who are about to stay in New Zealand building their careers as they advance on from postdoctorates. It's a significant change. And also the Science Infrastructure Fund will grow from $7 million this year to $15 million in three years. This, this, this week, in fact, we announced $30 million for the National Supercomputer Project, a, a, an infrastructure product spread across Canterbury University, the University of Auckland, NIWA and GNS, uh, and, other, and using other infrastructure as well. I want to just give members an insight as to the companies that actually get those technology development grants, because it's, that's where the rubber hits the road. These are the sorts of companies. Fisher and Parker Healthcare, $500 million of sales last year. Gallagher Group, $160 million of sales last year. And one, the one New Zealand company mentioned in a publication in Germany by Herman Simon called Hidden Champions, companies that dominate in their field. Raycon, with sales of $144 million. Tate Electronics in security, $200 million of sales. And the list goes on, including Scope Industries, Weta Digitals, and 27 other companies. Each of these companies has its niche, the kind of approach identified by Sir Paul Gallagher. Each of these companies are leaders in their fields. Our challenge is to grow those companies and a whole range of other companies around them much faster than we've done in the past. Because that, in a sense, points to our future, New Zealand's future. We're already strong in primary industries. That has been the foundation of the New Zealand economy for 150 years. And indeed, there's been uh, good uh, prices for those primary products in recent years. But it's not enough. We're strong in tourism. That generates uh, jobs all across the skill levels and with a particular concentration uh, of employment and lower skilled opportunities. And that's a huge sector to our economies. Those sectors will grow. And particularly in the tourism sector, they are job rich. But in truth, we also need to add a third sector, loosely called high technology. Some of that might be in biotechnology. Some of it will be in IT or digital media. Much of it, however, will be in niche manufacturing. Today, those companies generate $5 billion of exports. Some, as I've said, are quite large. F&P Healthcare, many are in the $30 to $100 million range exports. They're actually all listed here. The Technology Information Network, known as the TIN 100, I know this is well known to various members around this House, including, I might note, indeed, uh, Mr Shearer. The companies in this publication are the ones that we need to grow. So we need to see the F&P Health Cares grow to being a billion-dollar company. We need 100 companies to grow from, say, $50 million exports or thereabouts up to $100 million. That way we'd get to $10 billion of exports. And that would be just the start of the challenge. Many of those companies, many of the potential companies are yet to exist or are in their infancy. That is why we also have the, uh, the technology vouchers. A pilot program, $5 million uh, this year, but it has been oversubscribed and we will grow it according to demand. So, Mr Speaker, that really sets out the challenge for this nation to grow a new sector of our economy, because that is the way we're actually going to close the gap with Australia over time. That will be a very substantial challenge in its own right. Mr Speaker, the new Ministry of Science and Innovation also has an innovation board on it. We have included on that board some of New Zealand's leading science entrepreneurs, including uh, Dr William Ralston, who uh, also runs a company within the TIN 100 group, uh, South Pacific Sierra, a biotech company in the Canterbury area. My colleague, 
will know that company particularly well. And also Mr Grant Ryan of Yike Bike, actually also another Canterbury company. Why have I mentioned those two co that particular company? The Yike Bike was one of the 50 top inventions in the time uh, 50. So Mr oh, yeah. Speaker, oh, that is the challenge uh, that and that is what I'll be... Order. Order. Order.